So today we're gonna to talk about diabetes 1.5. What is that? Diabetes 1.5, interesting. It's not one, it's not two, it's right in the middle. So diabetes 1.5 is a combination of, it's part type one diabetes and it's part type two. So diabetes type one is destruction of the beta cells. The beta cells are the cells in the pancreas that make insulin, okay? And this is an autoimmune disease. And what's happening is you have antibodies that are attacking the cells that make insulin, decreasing the production of insulin. So you just don't make insulin anymore. So you have to take insulin. That's type one. Type two is the problem on the other end. It's the problem in the receptor. Okay, so you have insulin resistance. So it's really a situation because not only do you not make insulin, you can't receive it. So it's a double diabetes, and that's another name for it. Now the problem is that this condition is happening more and more in children as well. And so I think, based on the evidence out there, that is purely a situation. It's not diet. It's from vaccinations. Nowadays, a child gets about 80 vaccinations, okay? So it creates a lot of inflammation, okay? So we have a lot of inflammation going on uh, from repeated stimulation of the immune system. Then what happens is you have cortisol that comes in, adrenal makes it, which is an anti-inflammatory, so it's gonna to try to put out the fire. If there's not enough cortisol, then there's still gonna be enough inflammation to create damage in the cells of the pancreas. So a lot of children are now getting double diabetes. You didn't see this back in the early 90s or 80s. It was after the repeated introduction of all these vaccinations. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the symptoms of diabetes 1.5, okay? Number one would be frequent urination, okay? So you're peeing all the time, especially at night. Number two, you're thirsty all the time. Number three, you're getting weight loss, okay? Why? Because you have type one as well as type two together, okay? So in diabetes type one, people are not necessarily obese because insulin is a fat storing hormone. They have a problem with that, so they have a hard time storing fat. So the body will start going after muscle protein and it's a mess. So sometimes you get weight loss and a lot of times in this diabetes 1.5, or double diabetes, you don't necessarily always see obese people. See, if it was just a type two, you could just get the person on the right eating plan and correct it. But type one is different. Another symptom would be blurred vision. Okay, and then you have nerve damage, like at the bottom of your feet, tingling, numbness, it's called paresthesia. And then we have vision problems. Okay, so those are the symptoms. And in order for you to know if you have type one or type two, you have to get a test. You have to get an autoantibody test. It'll measure those antibodies that are attacking your own tissues. Now, when I was in practice, I would see people that started out type two diabetes, and then somehow they started needing insulin. And I'm like, why would they need insulin? It's getting worse and worse. And so what I was looking at back then was diabetes 1.5 because a lot of these people were tested and they were found to have antibodies against their own pancreas. Well, basically looking back, I can see now it was definitely a double-edged sword. They had not only the damage to the receptors, but also now to the beta cells. So we have the situation where maybe it started off type two and then it graduated into type one, but they also at the same time had a bit of the insulin resistance. So not only did they not make insulin, it just didn't work in their body. So let me just give you some 
tips on what I would recommend to help deal with this situation. Number one, I would make sure that I would eat foods high in nutrients, specifically phytonutrients. Why? Because phytonutrients, plant-based chemicals, decrease the complication from diabetes. So at least you wouldn't get the severity of the symptoms. Okay, that would be number one. Number two, I would really beef up on my vitamin D. Vitamin D is one of the best things for autoimmune conditions, especially for inflammation. And I would probably do 20 to maybe 30,000 IUs of vitamin D every single day. Uh, Zinc is very important for um, the cells in the pancreas, the beta cells. It's also very important in the immune system, especially autoimmune conditions. Another condition would be vitamin B1, but I would get this in a fat-soluble form called benfotamine. Okay? This is a really good um, vitamin to help protect against the complications of this issue. And then another thing that I would get, it's called nicotinamide. Okay? So I would do vitamin D, zinc, B1, and nicotinamide. So you want to do vitamin D, 20,000 to 30,000 I use okay, per day. Zinc, I would do at least 50 milligrams per day. I would do vitamin B1 in the form of benfotamine, and I would do probably about four tablets a day or capsules. Then nicotinamide. And for that one, I would follow what it recommends on the description on the bottle. And in the comments section, I'm going to put a very important paper that I highly recommend you download. It's from Molecular and Genetic Medicine, Review of Vaccine-Induced Immune Overload and the Resulting Epidemics of Type 1 Diabetes and Metabolic Syndrome, emphasis on explaining the recent accelerations in the risk of prediabetes and other immune-mediated diseases. It's fascinating, and you need to know about it. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're back. With another amazing recipe. No grains, no sugar, totally keto. There's no suffering in keto. Absolutely not, Karen. And it's an immune system builder. Absolutely. You have to check this out. I think you should hurry up, watch the recipe, and make it yourself. It's just so easy to be keto. But is it simple? It's super simple. We hope you enjoy making it as much as we are enjoying eating it.